Hey folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. So in this video, I just wanted to quickly jump on and talk about something that I have mentioned in passing on some live streams when the topic has come up, but I've never dedicated a specific video to it. So that's why I'm doing this video today. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Scream 6, but more specifically, the ending of Scream 6. Now, full disclosure, I am not the world's biggest Scream fan. I like the first movie, um, I, but I could take or leave most of the sequels. Um, I'm just not as emotionally invested into the franchise as some of you are. However, if they did this and they pulled this off, this would get even the casual Scream fan like myself really interested and, and kind of to perk up and go, well, this is interesting. I'd be very intrigued on where the trajectory of the story is going to go. Do you know what I'm saying? So what am I talking about specifically? Well, I made a tweet on January the 29th, so a few weeks ago now, that I'm going to read to you here. So this is what I said. I said, Scream 6 should step out of its comfort zone and deliver a shocking cliffhanger with the identity of Ghostface still unknown push Scream into new territory with something exciting and truly unexpected. Convince the audience that this time it really is different. So when you hear a line like, there's never been one like me before, Gail, that has weight, right? This, it has real stakes around it. There really has never been one like this ghost face before, right? It's not just a cool line that sounds cool during a two and a half minute trailer to get your asses into the movie theater. No, it really has actual meaning to the narrative. Now, I don't mean doing something arbitrarily, okay? The movie still has to feel like a scream movie, sound like a scream movie, taste like a scream movie, you know, shit and pee like a scream movie. I mean, the DNA of what a scream movie is still has to be there. I don't mean removing the DNA completely. Uh, I'm talking about adding to it, complementing it, and pushing Scream forward. That's what I'm talking about because every Scream movie right now, one, two, three, four, and five, has a beginning, a middle, and an end. I mean, every movie has a beginning, a middle, and an end. But I mean, the story of each movie begins and ends within the confines of that movie. Now, every movie is connected to the bigger Scream universe, but it's not like, you know, we're getting a killer that goes over several films, right? We know who the identity of the killer is and the stories are always wrapped up, you know, at the end of every movie. We've never had a situation where Ghostface wins. Now, when I say wins, I don't mean that he kills everybody and everybody is dead, although that would, that would be pretty interesting. I'm talking about where he, at the end of the story, at the end of the movie, he is clearly in control. He has the upper hand. Do you know what I'm saying? We've never seen that before, right? It's very, you know, I'm talking about like uh, the Empire Strikes Back, you know, a situation where clearly, you know, the good guys are still alive, but they're beaten. They're down. They're down and out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, nobody's going to argue that, yeah, the Empire definitely struck back, okay? Darth Vader, the Emperor, and the Empire won. That's what I'm talking about, right? We've never seen a situation like that. I find that interesting. I find that intriguing rather than just watching the movie and, you know, okay, I'm going to try and figure out who the killer is. Am I going to be right? Am I going to be wrong? And then at the end of the movie, oh, uh, you get your Scooby-Doo moment and the mask comes off and, you know, you damn kids. I mean, I mean, now again, you know, we don't know, you know, what else Scream 6 is going to have. And even if they have a traditional Scream ending, maybe everything else leading up to that will be so compelling and interesting and the different ideas and story points and plot beats and all, all these things will make that ending be okay. And everybody's like, no, okay, it's a traditional ending, but you know what? The movie was really great. The movie was really great. That could still happen. But at face value, when I think about it, I'm like, man, I would love that. I would love it because it's like, holy shit, we've never seen this before. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, making these decisions arbitrarily, okay? I'm not talking about just, you know, shoehorning in some shocking cliffhanger ending for the sake of being avant-garde and edgy. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, I think that should go without saying, but, you know, this is the internet. Um, you know, that's not what I'm talking about because if you do that, you know, if it doesn't feel organic, if it doesn't feel authentic, and that comes down to the writing, okay, 
your audience, whether it's a casual fan, whether it's a hardcore fan, maybe like you, will pick up on that. And then your your response and my response at the end of the movie will be like, oh, come on, that's it? Oh, no way, fuck that. Do you know what I mean? But if it's organic and, you know, if it's, and the writing is really good and, you know, the filmmakers know exactly where they're going, even if we as the audience don't, we don't have to know where they're going. But if the, if the filmmakers know where they're going, that's going to come through in the writing. You're, you're going to feel that in the plot beats, in the character's motivations, right? In the trajectory of the story and what's going on. And then you get to that point where you're like, ah! Oh, it's over! Fuck no! Ah, how long do we have to wait? When are they going to camera for Scream 7? Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a Halloween 5 situation where they shoehorn in this man in black. They have no idea who he is. They have no idea how he connects to the larger Halloween universe or where it's all going. And I'm paraphrasing, but I believe they said something to the effect of, yeah, we don't know. We'll just leave that for the filmmakers of Halloween 6 to figure out. No, you can't do that. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about carefully calculated decisions decisions that clearly come through in the writing, you know, where, as I said, you get to that point, you're like, oh, no way. I would love to see something like that. Ghost face wins. We have no idea who he is. And Sam and Tara are down and out. They're bloody. They're beaten. Now what? You've never seen one like me before, Gail. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because the proof is there in the film. Holy shit. Now, does that mean that you still not, you know, that you can't have your traditional ending and and have that line still ring true because of what happens throughout the movie between the beginning and the end? Sure. Okay, sure. Um, but I just, I think that would be cool. And it's like, Wow. We've never seen this before. And here we thought we were going to know who the ghost face killer was. Nope. Damn. You know what I mean? And like I said, if it's done right, that's not going to be disappointing to you. I mean, you may be like, ah, oh, shit, you know, but you're quickly like, ah, oh, that because it, because it was so good. It was so good. And it felt so organic and it felt right. You know, it wasn't just like, bleep, you know, for the hell of it. No, no, no. It's like, ah, oh, because you could see, ah, oh, oh, you know, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Anyways, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Would you like to see something like that? I would love to see something like that. I think it would be cool. I don't think they're going to do that, though. I really don't, which is disappointing. I'll be honest with you. It's disappointing. Anyways, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you want to follow me on social media, you can. There are my links right there. Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. All my links are in the description. Check them out until your heart's content. And when your heart is content, check them out again. That's going to do it for me. In the meantime and in between time, I will talk to you soon. There's never been one like me before, Gail. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see.